we have noticed what appears to be an upturned life raft in the water which went down the starboard side of Arvia. This was just one of three announcements made on my last cruise when we encountered a storm off the coast of Spain. When I embarked the cruise, which was a 13-night trip sailing from the UK in October, I knew that I was taking a risk. Our cruise had a lot of sea days, it was scheduled to pass through the notorious Bay of Biscay, and I am somebody who does get travel sick, so I was a little nervous. I've cruised through the Bay of Biscay before, and the weather's been fine, even in winter, so when I booked this cruise, I was quietly confident that it would be okay this time too. Perhaps too confident. The itinerary that we had chosen was meant to start with two sea days sailing to Lisbon in Portugal. I don't usually like to book a cruise with a lot of sea days, but my family wanted to cruise from the UK to somewhere sunny, and it does take at least two days to find some sunshine in October. This actually turned into more because it was too rough for us to dock, but at this point I thought that I had two sea days ahead. When we set sail, we quickly settled into life on board. It was a little rainy as we left Southampton, but nothing out of the ordinary. We enjoyed our time eating, watching the entertainment, and exploring this massive cruise ship. I was really impressed by the big atrium, this amazing dome area, and more than anything, I was excited to be with my family heading off on what would be an adventure. I was cruising with an extended family group that included included children, so I was really hoping that the weather wouldn't be rough for their sake. After all, I am the one who is always telling everybody how much fun cruising is, so I wanted to be right about that. The ship that we were on board was P&O's Arvia, which launched in 2019, and I hoped that the fact that this ship was new would protect us from any movement if we did get bad weather. Generally speaking, newer, bigger ships have better stabilizers, and when I felt unwell in the past, it's normally been on older ships. The first day at sea was relatively smooth. I barely noticed the ship was moving, and that is pretty normal. I can't even count the number of times I've been at dinner and we've sailed away and I've not noticed. I did a live stream recently, the ship sailed away while I was live on my YouTube channel, and I only noticed because the internet started to drop out. That is how little a ship can move when the weather is normal. On a regular day on a cruise, you can play pool without the balls ever rolling to the side, the dancers and the acrobats will perform without any issue, and it's completely normal to forget that you're on a ship. You can even find ice skaters who can do things like this, which I think shows how little the ship is moving, because you would not risk a swing like this if the ship was rocking and rolling. I've taken full cruises where I've hardly felt a thing, but sadly this wouldn't last for us this time. Waking up on the second day, it was clear that the weather was getting worse and the seas were getting rockier. I started to notice things in my cabin moving slightly. It was very slight, but still it was enough for me to notice. My cabin was right at the front of deck 12 and it couldn't have been any further forward. As far as movement goes, it's always worse at the ends of the ship. I did save money by not picking my specific cabin location, and I figured if there was a lot of movement, I would just spend my time in the middle and further down the ship anyway. If I was in the cabin, I would probably be in bed or I would be in the shower. I did have a shower problem on this cruise caused by the rocking, but more about that later. The captain did warn us that we might feel some movement and that it would be getting progressively worse as the day went on. Interestingly, it was going to get worse as we left the Bay of Biscay. The actual bay was relatively calm and the storm that we found was just below it. We were expecting to hit the worst of the storm in the evening, overnight, and into the next morning. It was always the captain who made these announcements, which I thought was really nice. I really don't need to be told about bad weather twice, and as soon as I heard that the seas would be getting rough, I took my seasickness medicine. My personal favourite at the moment is the brand Quells. It is absolutely magical, and the only side effect I get from it is that I have really weird dreams, and I do feel sleepy, but that's okay on a cruise. It is no problem if you want to have a nap on a cruise, that is what sea days are for, and we certainly wouldn't be outside enjoying the outside decks. Arvia does have a ropes course and a golf course, but they were of course closed. I've said the word course course way too many times. Course, course, horse. Divorce. <laughs> I was feeling okay at this point, but sadly not everybody in my family were coping so well. I feel so much worse when I bring somebody else into a situation where they feel unwell. I would prefer it to be me, to be honest. I can get on with it, I cruise a lot, it really doesn't matter. But either way, all of us were looking forward to docking the next day. That didn't happen though, and when we were in the clubhouse lounge watching a game show, the captain made an announcement. He said that... The weather forecast for tomorrow is looking pretty awful with winds over 40 knots expected at the port, together with heavy and torrential rain throughout the day. 
I'd been looking at the weather forecast for the next day in Lisbon too, and it looked as though it would be raining every single hour. I didn't think that that would be too much fun. I have visited Lisbon in the rain before, and it is beautiful, but it's very, very slippery. You do have to be careful there. Last year, I boarded a cruise in Lisbon on board, ironically, the Norwegian sun, and I was so drenched. I was drenched through by the time we got on the ship that I had to dry my hair under the hand dryer in the public bathrooms. I was soaked. It was still a great cruise though, I just wish I bought maybe a better coat. As much as I love Lisbon, I wasn't surprised to hear the captain say that our port stop would be cancelled. This has happened to me on lots of cruises in the past, so I wasn't too worried about it. The captain did say that we would be getting another port the day after in Gibraltar, which to be honest, I was very happy with. I love Gibraltar, the weather forecast in Gibraltar was looking sunny, and listening to the noise the other guests made when they made the announcement, I think they were happy to have a stop in Gibraltar to. We have instead managed to secure a berth in Gibraltar. Oh. What this meant though was that we would be on the ship for another day. The captain said the weather would be getting worse and that we would feel the movement so we should be careful. I do have missed port cover as part of my travel insurance policy so I will be getting a fixed amount back for missing the port. I was quite happy with that honestly. My options were either go to Lisbon in the rain or go to Gibraltar in the sun plus get a cash lump sum. I haven't got the money yet, but my claim has been submitted and it will be with me soon. If you need a travel insurance policy, just click the travel insurance button on my website and my guide will show you step by step what to look for. Never, ever, 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 ever take a cruise without cruise specific travel insurance. Don't do it. Please promise me now you're going to get travel insurance. In the middle of this second night, I woke up to go to the toilet and I got a shower door right to the face. I didn't have my hands up or anything because I wasn't expecting there to be a door there, so it did smack me head on. What happened was that the shower door had swung round and into the position of the regular door, so when I opened the regular door and went to walk in, the second door, the glass door, was right there, so I hit it. I was fine, I was just a little confused as it was the middle of the night. I was surprised surprised that there wasn't a magnet on the shower door or something to stop it from doing that. If it was a child or an OAP, it could have been a much bigger problem. Your Britishism of the week is an OAP. I recently said something about OAPs on a live stream and I was surprised to find out that this is not a worldwide term. OAP just means an old age pensioner. So you might have a OAP discount at the cinema or for lunch, the same way you would have a senior discount. It's the same sort of thing. It just means someone who's of retirement age. When the sea was rough, we did have quite a lot of noise from our balcony. Our balcony wasn't protected at all, so the wind would whistle through even if the door was completely closed. Closed. My family had a cabin further along and it was kind of set into the side of the ship so they didn't have any problems with the wind. I can sleep through almost anything so it didn't bother me but one thing that did bother me was that the safe door kept banging and the wardrobe doors would open. I ended up just putting a towel over the safe to make it be quiet and I propped the wardrobe doors with cushions from the sofa and that fixed the problem in the middle of the night. I was 99% asleep when I did that so I'm pretty impressed with my nighttime problem solving skills. Generally around cruise ships you'll find that a lot of things are tied or they're glued down to stop there being any way that things could fall over. When the seas are rocky, a cruise line will often close the outside decks because they don't want people just getting blown around. It could be quite dangerous. The downside of this, apart from the fact that you can't get the fresh air from outside, is that everybody is inside the ship. On our cruise, there were 5,335 people on board Avia, and she did handle the people very well. It wouldn't be uncommon to struggle to find a seat in a bar or a lounge on a day like this, but we didn't ever find that to be an issue. Maybe that was helped by the fact that some people were perhaps in their cabin feeling unwell. The sick bags did come out at one point. It's definitely just an in-case proportion, but I've never seen somebody actually be just randomly sick on a cruise. A friend of mine, Johnny, recently told me a story about how someone threw up in a pint glass, but I don't think we need to hear any more about that story. I think some people do imagine that in rough seas, you would be walking along the corridor at 45 degrees or plates will be smashing on the floor, but that really isn't the reality. Sometimes when you walk, you might sway to the side. It just looks like everybody is drunk. And if you put down a pencil, it may roll, but that's about it. 
Cruise ships are designed for the weather, and if the weather is going to be bad, they will usually avoid it. It's not in anybody's interest to make the experience of the cruise bad. Sometimes things are out of the cruise ship's control, though, like the lifeboat that we would find a little later. The captain made an announcement the next morning and told us that overnight we had technically gone through 8 meter high waves and we had winds of 65 knots which is around 75 miles per hour. Technically 74 miles per hour is the cutoff for hurricane strength winds so we sailed through hurricane strength winds. I don't think I've ever encountered wind that strong on a cruise before but Avia handled it very well. It was definitely not the roughest cruise I've been on. The record for that is saved for the ship I took through the Arctic circle. I sailed on a 25 year old ship to find the northern lights in March. So really rough weather was to be expected in that situation. What is fun is walking up and down the stairs when the seas are rough. For a few seconds it would get really easy. You would have like a power up and then it would become really hard. It was like being light and then heavy. It's great fun if you don't get seasick. The majority of people do not get seasick and there are so many people who love rough seas and plenty of people who are really disappointed when they can't feel the ship move. The statistics say that around a quarter of people are susceptible to travel sickness and unfortunately girls are more likely to be travel sick than boys which doesn't seem very fair. I definitely would have preferred to have been docked but the rocky weather didn't stop me from doing anything that I wanted to do. We listened to some live music, wandered around the inside of the ship and we ate whenever we were feeling hungry. If you are prone to seasickness it's definitely not a good idea to eat really big meals. It's also not a good idea to let your stomach be empty so kind of a constant stream of small amounts of food. Just imagine you're a little bird and you're just eating seeds all day. I don't really drink alcohol and that definitely helps me in this situation. Some foods like apples and ginger are meant to help. I have tried the ginger sweets before but I would much prefer to just eat a gingerbread man or a ginger nut biscuit. It was around now that the captain made an announcement that said that a cadet had spotted a lifeboat or a life raft in the ocean. The captain said, We are turning around so that we can verify if there is anybody in the water that needs assistance. Like most people on the ship, we went outside to try and have a look for this life raft. I really hoped that we wouldn't end up seeing anything that we would regret, but curiosity did get the best of me. The first thing I noticed was this line in the water where the ship had spun around really fast. We were heading back the way we had come because that was where the lifeboat was sighted. Something called SOLUS, safety of life at sea, means that ships are required to help out anybody who might be in danger. SOLUS is also the reason you have to do a safety drill before the ship sets sail, and and I like to think that the ships would help each other anyway, but it is nice to know that they have to. The captain said that he would update us on what they found and after a while of staring out to sea, trying to convince myself that I could see some orange blob somewhere, we did see it. The ship was turned in a way so that we could use the wind to our advantage. We could turn and sort of let the life raft come to us. It felt like it took quite a long time but slow and steady wins the race and that it did. Luckily the wind and the bad weather had calmed down by this point and the outside decks were open again. The life raft was brought on board and we were told that they'd identified the ship it had come from and that there wasn't anybody in the water who needed our help. I can't imagine how that call went. Hello ship, we found one of your lifeboats. You have? That's strange. Hudson was supposed to be looking after them. Yep, just checking all is okay. It's fine, thanks. I'll see what Hudson's doing. Hudson, are you taking a nap? I assume that our ship took on the life raft after that. I can't imagine a cruise ship would leave the ship at sea. Plus, if they did that, every single ship that came by would have to stop and check if all is okay, and that would delay an awful lot of ships. I do wonder if that original ship will ever get its lifeboat back. Maybe we left it in port for them, and they did like a click and collect and collected their life raft. Although the waves may have been the highest I've ever experienced, I didn't feel unwell on this cruise. Sadly, the same could not be said for the cruise I took into the Arctic Circle. It was absolutely worth it. We saw the Northern Lights, it was fantastic, but blimey, it was a rough trip. To find out what happened and who I would recommend this trip to, plus how many pairs of socks you need to wear if you're in the Arctic Circle, check out this video next.